I think if you're ever unsure whether you should read a specific book or not, just reading the first sentence is such an amazing way to get to know the atmosphere that the author is building. And um, I have some books with me today that I want to read you the first lines of that I think are really, really amazing. I watched this or I listened to this podcast by uh, Benjamin McAvoy from Hardcore Literature. I honestly love all his content. I love the way he talks about books and how passionate he is and how much he knows. Um, and he had this dedicated episode to his favorite first lines in books. So I thought I would just shamelessly steal the entire concept of the video <laughs> and make my own. Let's get started. Number one, Lolita. If you don't know Lolita, it's about a very inappropriate love story between a middle-aged man and a teenage girl. And the first lines are just one of the most amazing things I've ever read. Okay, chapter one. Lolita, light of my life fire of my loins, my sin, my soul. Lolita, the tip of the tongue taking a trip of three steps down the palate to tap at three on the teeth. Lolita. She was low, plain low in the morning, standing four feet ten in one sock. She was low in slacks. She was dolly at school. She was Dolores on the dotted line, but in my arms, she was always the leader. I love that beginning so much. Okay, what else do we have? Um, Pure Color by Shayla Hetty. Sorry, <laughs> I don't actually have that book, um, but I love the first lines of this book and it They've just stuck with me and I think it's oops, I think it's such an amazing way to, to open a book. So here it goes. After God created the heavens and the earth, he stood back to contemplate creation, like a painter standing back from the canvas. This is the moment we're living in, the moment of God standing back. Who knows how long it has been going for? Since the beginning of time, no doubt. But how long is that? And for how much longer will it continue? You'd think it would only last a moment, this delay of God standing back before stepping forward again to finish the canvas. But it appears to be going on forever. I love that. Really, really great. Okay. What's another one? So this is not technically a novel, but the sonnets from Shakespeare. Um, this is a this is the complete sonnets. They're like little poems, I guess. I don't know exactly the technical definition, but the first two lines of um, the first sonnet I really love. He says, "From fairest creatures, we desire increase." that thereby beauty's rose might never die. And I think it's such, it sets the tone so beautifully for the themes that he explores in those sonnets of beauty and age and um, morality. And uh, he does that in such a delicate way that I think is just so timeless that I'm really, yeah, it really impresses me in those first lines just suited so well. Of course we have The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. Amazing book. I love the first sentence. It goes like this. It was a queer sultry summer. The summer they electrocuted the Rosenbergs and I didn't know what I was doing in New York. And it just so perfectly sets the tone for this novel of this woman in her early 20s or maybe not even um, who is like trying to make something out of her life but 
she's always like caught in this under this bell jar in this depression she says but it's a little bit fun it's a little bit lighthearted, but actually with like a really really heavy theme underneath it and I don't know such an iconic uh, first line for me obviously there is fight club um, I think a lot of people know the first line of this book chapter one Tyler gets me a job as a waiter after that Tyler's pushing a gun in my mouth and saying that the first step to eternal life is you have to die um, brilliant I think again perfectly sets the stage for the story um, grabs you by the throat cried literally <laughs> and uh, yeah I love it love it love it um, here I have a bit of an unusual one the Corsair by Lord Byron this is this really really old kind of story and I picked this because the introduction from the woman who is like publishing this book or something I don't know um, she she has this hilarious sentence about Byron and she says upon the altars of unseemly and deformed human souls sometimes flashes the divinest white light of genius and dwells and burns there for years as if immeasurably superior to unconscious of the blemishes about it thus it was with Byron um, <laughs> And it's like, it's kind of really mean to talk about someone like that, but it also captures the, you know, mere biographical facts we know about Lord Byron. Like, he was a very troubled person, um, but his writing is exquisite. And I think he wrote this entire tale, which perfectly rhymes in like a matter of three weeks or something, which I don't even know how he did that. I also want to read you the actual first lines of the Corsair. So he says, O'er the glad waters of the dark blue sea, our thoughts as boundless and our souls as free. Far as the breeze can bear the billows foam, survey our empire and behold our home. I would actually really love to record this entire book because I cannot find anything about it on YouTube or on the internet or anything and I would love to listen to someone tell me that tale you know but there's nothing out there so maybe I will do that um, yeah then uh, Proust of course I'm obsessed with Proust at the moment I started reading In Search of Lost Time this year that's how far I've gone so far and it's honestly um, the most touching book I ever picked up. There's so much in there and uh, I'm just so glad. It was again uh, Benjamin McAvoy from the Hardcore Literature Book Club who, you know, recommended this book a lot. So amazing. And the first sentence is for a long time. I went to bed early and it might not seem like a lot but this sentence has kind of stuck with me since I started reading this book months ago now and I realized that oh emergency um, sorry I realized that I think if you're reading Proust you also went to bed early for some time but you don't anymore <laughs> because reading Proust at least for me is kind of only really possible in those like late evening hours uh, which is also when he wrote the entire text and it like it gets you into this sleepy state and all the thoughts he has like it really it really shows that that's things that go through your mind when you're sleepy, when you're tired, when it's late. And uh, I think it's just so, so fitting. 
Oh, okay. So I have a, a non-fiction book here. This is from Erich Fromm. It's called Märchen, Mythen, Träume. So fairy tales, myths and dreams. And um, I love the way he writes. Like he's so critical about society, but in such an understanding, I don't know, not purely negative way. And the first sentence is in German. <laughs> So it says, wenn es stimmt, dass die Fähigkeit zu staunen der Anfang aller Weisheit ist, dann wirft das ein trauriges Licht auf die Weisheit des heutigen Menschen. Um, and it basically translates saying something like, if it's true that the ability to wonder is the beginning of all wisdom, that casts a very sad light on the wisdom of the modern human. Um, this is an, a really great book about well, fairy tales and myths and dreams and how it's like this symbolic language that we kind of forgot how to read and how to interpret. And very readable, just amazing, like makes me feel so much smarter <laughs> when I read some Erich Fromm, like it's just so much happening inside of me when I when I read through his lines and um, yeah really really good okay I think the last one that I have here with me is Hannah versus the tree by Lilan Della Durantai and this book is amazing like it's written almost like it's, it's written in a poetic way but it's a thriller so it's a poetic thriller <laughs> and I've never seen anything quite like it and I think he's really unknown but the way he writes is amazing like it's another one of these books that I would love to just record an audiobook from and like upload it to the internet I know I'm not allowed to do that without uh, the author's consent of course but I think more people need to need to read this um, and the first first sentence is just gripping so he says did you really think she wouldn't come for you in the night like you came for so many during so many nights amazing check out this book i i don't know more people need to know about this okay and then i have um actually written some down on this really messy note of paper from the original podcast that i listened to from benjamin i'll link it down below by the way and like check out his content it's amazing if you're into books um, classics at all he's definitely the person to watch um, and he mentioned a few beginnings that I wrote down here so I haven't actually read all these books but they're just amazing uh, so Jane Austen Pride and Prejudice <laughs> the first sentence so funny it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife <laughs> it's amazing so you know for a long time novels started with this kind of statement that they were then like trying to prove or or prove wrong and this is one of them and it's uh you know you wonder like is there some truth to that i think so <laughs> um yeah, also David Copperfield, whether I shall turn out to be the hero of my own life or whether that station will be held by anybody else, these pages must show. <sighs> Again, like that makes me want to read that book and all these books are definitely on my to read list. And um, I think the last one I want to share, which is honestly the most beautiful maybe beginning I ever ever heard and I haven't read the book it's called The Left Hand of Darkness by uh, Le Guin and, and it goes as following I'll make my report as if I told a story for I was taught as a child on my home world that truth is a matter of the imagination 
yeah so i'll leave it at that i would love to know if you have any first lines in books that you love i'd like to know if any of those books spoke to you if you want to check them out um and yeah thank you so much for watching and check out hardcore literature it's amazing <laughs> and uh, see you again soon bye